Good morning, friends. How are you all doing on this fine day? As of writing this intro, I feel terrific because I had to go through the most joyful experience any man, woman, or amoeba such as myself can go through. And that's playing Star Citizen. Let me tell you something, this game is life-changing. <laughs> Star Citizen is an immersive scam, I mean space sim MMO, heartfully funded by absolute idiot fans and lovingly developed by CIG. The game is so immersive that even the website mimics the game in design, language, and even functionality. The game has amassed... HOW MUCH?! As of writing this script, the game has amassed... 656 million dollars. Let me say that one more time for the people in the back. 656 million! With the ongoing development time of 13 years, the game cemented itself as a cornerstone of the gaming world. So the game must be amazing then, right? <laughs> right? Many people have speculated that this game is a cash grab, that it will never be finished and that the developers are selling you a dream and not an actual product. And those people are WRONG! Don't listen to those naysayers who don't have the mental capacity to appreciate what this game truly is. It makes me sad that Star Citizen isn't on Steam because I really wanted to give it every single award for this year. Now I knew that I wouldn't be able to fully enjoy Star Citizen because I know I'm not the main demographic for this game. I only tick two out of three boxes that make an average Star Citizen player. I have too much free time, I hate myself, but I don't tick the third one, which is have infinite amounts of money, or this. And I find it challenging to relate to the average player, who is typically a man in his 30s. They won't understand me if I say that the game is very skibbity riz on God for real for real skull emoji. And you don't simply become a Star Citizen enjoyer. You have to be born as one. But that didn't stop me from playing the game for a whole week. Seven full days of life well spent. <laughs> Uh, so, what is it exactly that you do in Star Citizen? Well, you make money so you can buy a big ship, and then use that big ship to make even more money to buy an even bigger ship. But to get started, you need your starter ship first. So head on to the pledge store and get yourself a starter pack. But only losers play with the starter ships. Why don't you head on over to the ship store? There, you'll find a wide range of very cool and very affordable spacecraft. You don't want to be seen flying the meager Aurora. Now, would you? <laughs> what are you, poor? While you're at it, you can also buy a paint job too. And don't forget to sign up for the 10 or $20 monthly subscription, which comes with its own special store where you can buy even more stuff. <laughs> if you're a bit worried about your bank account going dry, don't worry, there are very generous seasonal discounts you can take advantage of as well. Now, you could, hypothetically, buy several other games for the price of one in-game ship, and maybe even have fun. But do you really want to miss out on this? No, didn't think so. And if you really did spend more than $45 on this game, all I can say to you is this. Uh, whoops, uh, wrong clip, wrong clip. Uh, it's this one. Uh oh, so, uh, sorry, wrong clip again, hold on, hold on, uh, ignore that. Ah, here it is. What really should be in the forefront of your mind isn't actually playing the game, but the fact that we are funding such an amazing and ambitious project. The demon of Babylon disguises himself with the coat of the righteous. What are you doing? Get back in the painting. I hold CIG in the highest regard. A very reputable and trusted developer that delivers consistently and on time. Yes. Sandworm? What, what are you talking about? What sandworm? Take your meds. Now, I'd like to take a moment and address the respected whales in the Star Citizen community. The ones that really keep this whole ship afloat. <coughs> Once you've spent about $300 on your first purchase, go ahead and install the game. Uh... Install the game. Sadly, I have uh, encountered a small hiccup. I'm sure I'll be able to resolve it after I look at the log file. You know, the log file. It's located where log files are usually... logged. I know where that is. Two hours later. 
I don't know where that is, but I simply switched the installation to another SSD and it worked. I should have known that the setup was trying to tell me that all along. While the game is installing, you should head on over to the tutorial page. There, you'll find hundreds of hours of reading material on the game's systems. Afterwards, I suggest you spend about 14 hours on YouTube to watch YouTubers explain uh, stuff like how to leave the starting city in a very quick and efficient 15 minute video. <laughs> uh, I didn't do any of this. Go ahead and create your <laughs> funny character. Pick a starting city and your region. The game tried to give me the best region by default, but I chose the worst one. These are the recommended system requirements for your game to run at a decent 20 frames per second. Go ahead and complete your in-game tutorial. It's very intu- don't look over there. It's very intuitive and informative, and it will teach you everything you'll ever need to play the game. I'm honestly shocked at how thorough it is. Bravo, CIG. And if you're one of those people who gets lost in the hangar, not knowing the exact position of the elevator that takes you up to the terminals, that's on you, pal. For instance, it's clearly obvious that the red text at the top of your screen indicates that a police officer is trying to catch up to you for a routine scan, and that you should slow down immediately. It's so obvious that the police officer doesn't even bother to contact you in any way. Failure to comply will net you a meager 20k fine, exactly the amount of money you start the game with. Oh, by the way, if you use my code while registering and buying the game, you'll get an extra 5,000 credits, which is so much money. <laughs> do you know what you can do with an extra 5,000 credits? Uh, and of course, landing services is located in your friends tab. What are you, dumb? Are you stupid? Also, if you're told that if you re-log in your ship's bed that you'll reappear where you left off, only to be teleported back to your starting area, it's clearly your fault for not reading between the lines. Clearly, you were supposed to use the interaction menu on your sleeping cell and choose the option to log out that way. So have fun running back to the hangar area. Oh, uh, I guess it's time to talk about them. While visiting populated areas like outposts or cities, you may come across some NPCs that are behaving, uh, different. <laughs> Each NPC has a complex daily cycle that involves standing around in different places. It's not like it happens everywhere and all the time. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yep. You might be wondering what exactly is their purpose in the game. To me, they serve as a constant reminder of what you paid money for. You can even watch them multiply over time. Someone's gotta fill up those 32 gigs of RAM, right? It's also very refreshing to see people not looking at their phones all day and just, you know, living in the moment. The ultimate power stance. The game features a bustling world of one whole star system with four planets and 12 moons that you can seamlessly explore. No, I don't mean Todd Howard's definition of explore, I mean the real thing. You can fly down to any planet and land wherever you like. Is there a reason for doing this? No. Would it be fun? Only the first time. Right away, you'll notice how absolutely gorgeous the game looks. Even using the lowest graphics options, you'll be able to enjoy the most stunning visuals PC gaming has to offer at a comfortable 8 frames per second. Even the space skybox itself sports at least a 5 megabyte JPEG. Now, I'm all for crazy good graphics. I don't like that cartoony stuff that most popular games have going on nowadays. Nah, give me 3 trillion polygon models any day. The train station you rides show off the size of these massive cities that you'll definitely get to explore one day. But for now, you can only walk on this part of it. My favorite city is Area 18, because if you accidentally take the the wrong train on your first visit, it takes you to a dead end which leaves you confused for about 30 minutes. Every room is highly detailed, from simple outpost shacks to luxury apartments that usually feature decorations such as placeholder item and placeholder item. And also, BEANS! As for the bigger picture, there are no aliens, no rival factions, but you will find familiar faces along your travels. Mike Pence? <laughs> Twitch? <laughs> 
Unblock me on Twitter and then we can talk. Your highly detailed ships are explorable mid-flight. Depending on the ship you buy, you can have some amazing utilities such as a retractable toilet, which alone justifies at least a $400 price tag. What more could you want? Naturally, I did what any normal person would do with their money, and I bought myself a $275 Constellation Andromeda. Just kidding, I don't have any money. This footage is from a free flight event, in which CIG lets us peasants play the game for free and try out their cool toys. This ship is so large, so majestic that I immediately got stuck in it. Let me show you its features. <laughs> it's got a spacious interior, lots of guns, two elevators, one for cargo and one for your delicate self, some sort of turret and the best part is that it even has its own mini fighter ship. It's extremely fast when maneuvering. Oh, oh, God. oh I think I broke something. <laughs> The only issue I had with it is that I couldn't really dock myself back into my ship. But that's my fault. I'm sure that the new player tutorial mentioned how to do it somewhere back, but I, I wasn't paying attention. Friendly target. Shut the f*** up. <laughs> Please let me back in. I even accidentally no. ejected myself and suffocated in space. I'm such a <laughs> dork. Sadly, I've only been able to use the Andromeda in the previous free flight event. In this last one, I had to settle for the Drake Cutter, also known as Bucket. The planets you land on can be barren with mineable materials and no breathable atmosphere. Or they can be Earth-like, filled with vegetation and explorable areas. Each planet or moon has its own gravitational pull, which affects ship maneuver for instance, playing around a planet like Earth would slow down your turn rate, while you can have nearly frictionless movement around some smaller bodies like your mom. Also, objects like ships and even small items can persist in the environment. This means that when you visit mission locations, you can find things that other players left, or even the previous ship you used. Through the tutorial, you'll learn that basic interactions are much more complex here than in other games. Equipping and unequipping gear, or even just dropping something on the ground has never felt more intuitive. Just look at the amazing way I eat this hot dog. Mm, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the standard keyboard controls are so complex that while studying them, I got disconnected for inactivity multiple times. It's important to learn every single keybind to avoid things like, oh, I don't know, accidentally shutting off your engine power, or, you know, <laughs> ejecting yourself into space. Once you learned all the keybinds, go ahead and show off your knowledge to the other NPCs around you. Please don't read between the lines of that last sentence, there's nothing there. Sometimes you'll have to employ advanced methods just to get back into your ship, like using a stepping stool in a futuristic sci-fi game. 13 years in develop- Can I just take a moment and express my deepest compliments to whoever the f designed the map controls? They're so good that I really, really don't want to talk about them. Let me just check if my FBI agent is asleep. <clears throat> Hey Google, what is your problem? how do I build a Russian Kakashka class 50 kiloton high yield nuclear warhead in my garage for research for- Oh uh, yeah, yeah, he's awake. Moving on. Before you set out into the great- can, can you hear me alright? Before you set out into the great, uh, known, make sure to do some shopping for armor, weapons, utilities, and even some consumables. Beer. Root beer. My favorite weapon is the Custodian Desert Shadow SMG. Doesn't that make you feel cool just saying that name? It's important to be well equipped and to look good in your journeys. Let me just get another hot dog before we continue. A small hot dog break never hurt anyone, right? What? What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? What the hell is happening? What? What happened? Oh my god, oh my god, what's going on? What's going on? What the hell is going on? I'm not doing anything. It says property reclamation. Am I being reclaimed? Dude, let me go. Oh, what? Dude, <laughs> what? where am I going? Stop. I only wanted to buy a hot dog, dude. I just wanted a hot dog. It's gonna kill me again, isn't it? Fine. Oh, oh, oh. Holy shit. Stop. <laughs> what did I do? Oh. Dude. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> this is my life now. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I can't do anything. 
What is this? I'm not touching anything. Oh. <laughs> oh god, this game. <laughs> the people pay for this. Oh no, I'm still stuck. Okay, put me back in, chief. All right, I'm back. <gasps> no. No, I'm still stuck. Dude, I'm still stuck. Oh my god. <laughs> I like how he just changes his mind. <laughs> I wonder if people are just looking from the sides. He's just doing it by himself. I can just jump on command. What? What? Oh, I can move! Wait. No, I can't. Am I dead? Am I finally dead? No, I'm not. I don't know what to do! Let's see if I still need an exorcist. No. No. <laughs> Look at this. Help me. You gotta help me, man. You gotta help me. Please. Do something. No. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, thank you. Nope. It's still... It's still doing it. No matter how many times I died, my fate was decided. An hour of troubleshooting and one stress relief meme later... Oh, no. Nothing worked. Apparently, the purchase of that one hot dog has caused me irreparable brain damage. But brain damage didn't stop me in life, and I'm not about to let it stop me in the game. Okay, I have some semblance of control while I'm prone. Someone opened the door. Okay, I can do this. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I'm gonna make this work. I will get to my ship one way or another. Shut up. Shut the f up. Excuse me. <laughs> when in doubt, bunny hop. Ooh. Stay calm, relax, don't move. No, 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 no. Stop. Stop. I got this. I will get to my ship. Hop to the hangar. Okay. Give. Oh my god. Stop, stop, stop. I want to pay the insurance. Thank you. Fuck. Fuck. I can't. Thank you for vehicle. Your vehicle has been Hunger 2. Hunger 2. Hunger 2. This elevator. Quick. Carefully. Carefully. Then. Oh, God. I made it in. What the hell is it? No, 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 no! You are the I don't care about that right now! My engine won't turn on! Uh, might as well take a walk then. <sighs> I just wanted to play this game. <laughs> no injuries detected. What about my brain injury? I'm gonna reinstall the game. All right, ducks, relax. It's just another 100 gigabytes to download. It's okay. Go outside, look at the night sky, and think of all the incredible people who have paid money for this game. <laughs> Reinstalling the game did not work. Resetting the options? Nah. So I tried the character repair tool. I tried to explain what happened, but uh, CIG didn't really want a full description. Wow. <laughs> and lo and behold, it didn't work. Oh no. No, 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 no. So I resorted to the only alternative I could think of, creating another account. In the meantime, I just couldn't help but wonder how vast and incredibly detailed the coding must be for this game. Truly, no other game ah. comes even close to its glory. The day before tried to take the throne, but got quickly shut down. Which is a sad thing, really. Well, the new account is a minor monetary setback, but we're so back. But let me ask you something. Are you 
tired? Is the weight of the world too much? Do you feel like everything is turning to shit and there's no way to stop it? Do you feel like the sands of time are slipping through your fingers, causing you to lose every semblance of hope for each day that passes? Well, I don't have a solution for your problems, but I do have this. Introducing the stage. The past year is definitely proof that we are indeed living in the worst timeline. You could even call it a clown world. So what else is there to do but get up on stage and perform? With membership options that range from normal person to you can help fund this shitty content. We're looking to be a happy bunch with a primary focus on community. So click that fat join button and become a channel member today. Now, uh, where, where was I? Oh, Star Citizen. Oh, how could I forget about you? To travel around the system, your ship can quantum jump to different locations. Those locations are indicated on your skyline. And jumping can be a bit scary. But don't worry, you'll get a hang of it. Depending on the distance of your target area, jumping can take anywhere from a few seconds to an eternity. What the fuck? And here's the best part. You can't just jump to any location you want. There are certain markers that you can jump to, and the rest you'll have to fly to manually. If your mission target is in the middle of butt fuck nowhere, you'll have to jump to the nearest location and then fly to your mission target for about 10 or 20 minutes. But there's another way. On a planet or moon, Say, you have location A, B, and C. We'll give them names so that the Star Citizen players can follow along. A would be your home, B would be the ship store, and C would be, for no particular reason, your mom's place. Now, imagine, if you will, that your mission target is nested between the store and your mom's place. But you can't quantum jump to it. What you would have to do is quantum jump to the store, or your mom's place, and then you would have to quantum jump to the other side. But here's the catch. While quantum jumping, the moment you find yourself above your mission target, you would cut the power to your ship, which would cause it to instantaneously stop in place. It's weird, but it works. But let's say that your mission target is in the middle of this triangle that we have here. Well, in that case, you're fucked. Have fun flying for the next 30 minutes. Got all that? Great. Now you're ready to travel like a real star citizen. Who's a good boy? Now, let's get to earning money. Each mission type has the same description so as not to confuse the average star citizen player here are some of the missions that i've done myself delivery missions you go to a place you take the box to the ship you fly the ship to a different place you give the box done claim jumpers you fly to an area and destroy a stationary target pretty simple right search the area oh you mean this area uh, sure bro where where do you want me to start this mission can make you feel like you're searching for a needle in a haystack a small bean in a country-sized shopping mall a brain cell in a star citizen play oh my god there you are easy money bounty hunting you fly to the middle of buttfuck nowhere and apprehend the target some of them don't put up a fight Shit. <laughs> but some of them you'll have to persuade. You insane bastard. Clearing out hostiles. In this mission, you must vacate an area of the undesirables. But I had nothing but issues with this mission. Let me show you. In this first example, I had to land on a planet and I roamed around for like 30 minutes not being able to find anyone. In my second mission, I had to help clear out a space station. How do I dock you? Don't worry, citizen, I'm here to help. But all I found were empty hallways and a bit of loot on the side. Oh, and what's this? Are these drugs? Wow. I guess I was late to the party then. Well, since I'm here, you guys don't need this one, right? Yoink. While I was busy looting with the other players, uh, the mission just sorted itself out. I didn't get paid for it, but hey, I got some loot. Speaking of loot, I should really check what those boxes are for. So I fire off my web browser and realize... Oh, well, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is, while these are drugs, they're legal everywhere except one place. The bad news is, that place is my home base. And it just so happens to be where I'm currently going. Oh well, 
This isn't mine, officer, I swear. Racing mission. As a safety measure, you need to get into your racing suit. And also, make sure that your ship is empty before departure. You don't really race other people here, you just do a time trial. This particular race features sharp turns. No need to explain further, I'm sure that my bucket can manage. Let's go. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. I meant to do that. Well, that wasn't so bad. I actually really enjoyed that mission. Fun, straightforward, you know, working as intended. Anyway, time to commit some insurance fraud. <laughs> There's also mining and salvage missions, but I didn't bother doing those. But why not, you may ask? Because... Because we're boring! And I'll get to the mining a bit later. Let me, let me show you some more funny stuff first. Like my favorite mission type. Bunker missions. Bunker missions land in the mercenary category, meaning it involves shooting people with guns. We begin by traveling to our location and entering the bunker. Coming down here for the first time, you won't exactly know who to shoot, so just keep an eye out on whoever points their gun at you first. Those would be your enemies. And, uh, you know what? I'll let the footage speak for itself here. This is what they call the future of gaming. <laughs> Just because you're an FPS god doesn't mean that the NPCs are absolutely hopeless. Ooh. You see, they employ advanced warfare tactics, and that's burrowing underground. This especially counts for enemies with a lot of loot on them. We can't let you win too much down here, can we? Did the big guy just fall through the floor? Are you serious? So now, what should have been an elimination mission turns out to be the most intense game of whack-a-mole. Just make sure to reload first. Reload first. Reload first. Is this gonna be a problem? Sadly, some of them burrow way too far down. And trying to fix the problem, I mean, uh, trying to get them back to the surface by flying back out into space and then re-entering the bunker only causes them to dig further down. My persistence is, uh, truly frightening. What's the definition of insanity again? Sadly, the NPCs are unfazed by my actions, but hey, uh, they, they restock their loot. Just look at this rocket launcher I found. It's so powerful that just by trying to equip it, it's physically pushing me around. And I would have tried to use it on somebody, but well. But the biggest danger in these bunkers aren't exactly the people with the guns. Yep, this working environment is not OSHA certified. Don't believe me? Look at this. What? I managed to knock myself out by uh, twisting my ankle and hitting my head on something. Oh, but look, my distress signal has been answered. My savior Dropsy is moving at an impressive speed of about 2 kilometers per minute. And the distance between us is 19,168,718 kilometers. That's the equivalent of nearly 12 million BDU, burger distance units, also known as miles. At this rate, Dropsy will reach me in about 
9,584 minutes, or nearly 160 hours, and sadly, my mortal coil cannot last a full six and a half days. I'm sorry, Dropsy. The spirit is willing to wait, but the body is spoiling. The game knows that this mission type is the worst one of all, so occasionally when respawning it provides you with some stress relief. Ah. I died so many times to this stuff that the landing services guy is just preemptively opening the hangar door for me. But bunker missions have a valuable perk to them, you see. And that is being able to retrieve yourself when you die. So you don't really lose your gear down here, just your time. But you know, who values that? Now I did mention earlier bunker missions. So let me explain the second mission revolving around bunkers. In this other mission, you need to retrieve several packages from a dispenser deep inside the bunker. And don't worry, all the bunkers are copy pasted so that you don't get lost. The terminal for the package dispenser requires a four digit code that only one bunker officer has and you must find his body to get it now i've done all this but uh i failed to record it because star citizen is so cpu heavy that it killed my obs many times so let me just explain what happened after finding the officer's body i put the code in and the dispenser started spitting the boxes out each one taking several minutes to arrive i then carried my first box to the elevator but when i put the box on the elevator it immediately immediately fell through it. No biggie, I'm sure that the second box will make- Oh no, it fell through too. I don't know why this mission has such a design, but I'm sure that it's intentional. It's not only the boxes that fall through, it's also the NPC bodies. But I'll get to the workaround in a second. On the other hand, this particular mission can have an endless stream of enemies just constantly coming in. I only realized this when uh, things started getting weird. I can't do anything. Which was enough to crash my game. Now if you do somehow manage to complete the enemy clearing mission, you'll get a comfy 15 minutes to fuck up out of here, boy, get off my lawn. I advise you to use that time and carry as many friends back to your ship as you can. <laughs> First, you'll have to leave them in front of the elevator, then activate it, and then pick them back up again. There is a way to fail the mission early though, and that's by shooting one of the highly advanced guards that are working in the bunker. Just look at this absolute unit of a man. Stout. Alert. Stout with every step. <laughs> People make fun of his stride, but I'm telling you, this man knows what he's doing. All right, <laughs> seriously, CIG, are you gonna let Starfield outdo you? Come on. I even tried to put the poor guy out of his misery, but for some reason, my guns wouldn't shoot. I don't know, man. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I guess this guy is the reason why mercenaries are employed to defend these bunkers. Uh, the bad guys, however, truly are the most evil enemies I came across in gaming. Not only do they have PewDiePie what merch, fucking... but they're also British. Horrible horrible. One last thing I can mention about bunkers is that there's this weird terminal that you can hack using a blue keycard thingy, but I don't think it does anything. I mean, I don't know, I must have missed it in the tutorial. And look at this stinky keyboard, ugh, disgusting. Now all this stuff was pretty boring if you ask me, so let's get to some funny stuff. In one of my bounty hunting missions, I had only the last known location of a target, which happened to be on this snowstorm covered planet. And just when I was a about to leave my ship and explore on foot, I realized I lost my helmet. I don't know how it happened, but it's not the first time, believe me. I tried exploring as much as I could by just flying up to things really close, which worked out quite well, but I couldn't be sure. I felt like the game would just not progress the mission further if I just stayed in my ship, so holding my breath... Uh, 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 hold on, I gotta repark. Holding my breath... Uh, uh, hold on, I gotta repark again. Uh, this is a normal occurrence, by the way. Don't worry about it. Holding my breath, I stepped outside and the good news is... I can breathe. The bad news is... It's a bit chilly outside. Chilly as in it's minus 88 degrees Celsius or minus 126 in burger units. Which meant that my plan was doable. What the? Taking short trips, I managed to find absolutely nothing. There were these two boxes, one of which I wanted to keep, but um, yeah, let's let's not talk about that. Judging by the parked ship and the items left outside, I think that the player beat me to my target and already left by committing insurance fraud, probably. It's a form of fast travel. I don't judge. Mystery solved. Moving on. Retrieval op missions are the same as delivery missions with one extra step. 
stealing. You're tasked with traveling to an outpost guarded by pirates, who, as we established before, aren't really a threat. They are, however, free loot. But in my time doing this mission, I learned about their hidden purpose. They are, above all, a distraction. Whoa! Alright, nobody panic. Just slowly open the first door, then slowly open the second one. Carefully enter the pilot seat. Unfortunate. Now, the pirates that can attack you are real griefers, because instead of just finishing the job, they just leave you there, stranded. What the fuck? Oh well, at least I got to keep my funny armor I found. I'm sure I won't get ambushed like that on my second try. It's just smooth sailing from here. Oh, no. Okay, nobody panic. Nobody panic. Okay, it's time to panic! I'M GETTING REALLY SICK OF YOU! Well, at least now I can board my ship. <sighs> Third time's the charm, right? Oh, no. YOU fucking DICK! That's it. Let me in. Open up. Where is he? Can I fly this thing? You! F*** you! <gasps> oh, hell yeah! Gentlemen, we got an upgrade. And yes, just gentlemen here. Peep the stats. My YouTube channel has never experienced the gaze of a woman. Just like me! Oh, and in case any are watching, uh, my DMs are open. Uh, send feed pics, please. Anyway, after transferring the loot to my newly acquired ship, I decided to quickly test if this planet had any atmosphere. And it's here I realized that the game probably didn't like me. Oh god, please, please! Not like this. Oh. Imagine losing your ship three times in a row and then getting sweet revenge only to suffocate by accident. That would be bad. Now, let me tell you, this ship is fast and uncontrollable. <gasps> oh yeah, there's G-Force in the game. But I never found that out because up until now I was flying a literal bucket. I'll have to be careful with this thing. But now, to make my first delivery. Good evening, officer. Please don't ask me how I got this ship. This ship is about three times the speed of my old bucket. But probably the best part about it is that it has that. Automated defense. Time to really test this bad boy out. Now, I wanted to finish my enemy off, but uh, you'll notice that apart from my machine guns, my laser guns fire for about half a second before they go empty. And the reason for that is, well, I forgot to redistribute all the power from my shields back to everything else. Oh well, let's call it a draw. Back to work. Breaking news, guys. I found the missile button. Time to make the second delivery. Uh, small issue. I can't pick up the box. I can use my tool gun on it, but uh, only while inside my ship. When I leave it, it just turns off. <sighs> After googling a bunch, I learned that this is an occasional bu- uh, I mean a uh, feature, which happens when the game thinks that I'm carrying something and uh... Wait, wh why am I explaining it to this guy? He doesn't understand me. Not like you do. I tried fixing the feature by picking something else up and then dropping it, which didn't really do anything but reveal my culprit. It was this piece of shit. Well, I guess I'll drop off my loot here and uh, commit backspace in my bed. I can't even peacefully die in my own bed. God damn it. Can't have shit in Star Citizen. Traveling back to my... Where did it go? My stolen ship has disappeared, and the mission objective with it. I guess that's alright. After all, I got to keep my loot. Time to go back home and sell it. Oh boy, I love selling things one by one. There's an option to sell more than one item at a time, but it doesn't work. So I have to use an auto-clicker and, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna watch a movie in the meantime. Are you enjoying the show? Refill your bean plate. You'll love this next mission. Yep, 
it's the same one. Come on, I gotta steal that ship again. Ah, welcome, welcome. I've been waiting for you. This is the most fun I had in this stupid, I mean, uh, great game. Excuse me, sir, you're in my seat. Thank you. Hey, no, no, stop it. What are you doing? What the hell? Okay, then. I've done some research, and uh, I guess we're stuck with each other now. Okay, this is another point in which Star Citizen bugged out my OBS, so just imagine that this fight here took way longer than it has. And sadly, it also ended in a stalemate. Uh, I blame my gunner friend over there in the back. Uh, anyways, back to the mission. Eh, that'll fix itself. Yoink. Oh, let's not forget about you. Ow. Alright, time to make my delivery. And about time, too. From this point, nothing can possibly go wrong. <laughs> no way. No way. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. There's absolutely no fu- There's- There- the whole thing! I have done the entire quest, and now you do this to me? <gasps> Wait. Oh. Okay. 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 Oh. Don't. Die. Oh god. Let me in. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, hear me out. If the outcome of that moment was different, oh boy, I would have had to call this game bad. Anyway, uh, mission complete, I can die peacefully now. I figured that was the most excitement I was gonna get from the normal missions in Star Citizen. So, why not try something different? Something... wrong. Something they don't want us to do. What the hell is wrong with you? I'm talking about personal missions. Get your mind out the gutter. Personal missions are illegal missions that carry a heavier risk with a bigger reward. They also cost money to acquire. So traveling to the mission area, I found this little guy protecting it. <laughs> but I wasn't the only one looking for a payday here. <gasps> what? Oh my god. That's a fucking. <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> it appears that a friendly player accidentally fired multiple shots at me with his ship. What contact? He's going up. Oh, he is coming closer. All right, bring it on. Oh, there's two. I'm out of here. Okay, then. Seeing as this place wasn't going to be a cakewalk like the previous missions, I'm back. I decided to move my respawn location to the station that was close to this planet. Sorry about that. And, uh, something tells me that this place is popular. But visiting the same place again, I even saw three people fighting in the distance. I know it's hard to see, but trust me, those three ships over there, they're shooting at each other. Which gave me an opportunity to sneak in. Oh, delightfully devilish, Ducksmore. So, what is this mission exactly? Well, basically, you have these terminals that print money. But you need to start them up first. Once they start, they will Will accumulate money over time and while they're doing that anyone can come in and take over the transfer for themselves luckily I came in just in time as someone's terminal was maxed out so I started a transfer to my own wallet and then <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh yeah I'm staying here forever there are two terminals in this area and if you activate them both they link up and generate money faster oh yeah baby but they can also jam too so you need to wait why am i explaining this in so much detail you came here to laugh not learn look at this funny kill look at it <laughs> now look at my funny ship dancing oh and look at what it does after i repark it Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I don't really know what to say about that. Just, just cue the next scene already. While I waited for my money to print, I got to watch a cool show happening right above me. I think these two, two are enemies, and this is a friendly. And the friendly is getting owned. Oh no. Uh oh. 
And then, please land. An opportunity presented itself. Yo. But I was too late to hijack the pirate ship. No. However, I settled for the next best thing. <laughs> My ship now, yoink. <laughs> Man, things are just getting more and more exciting. <laughs> oh, sh Yo, no, no way. <laughs> Private property, <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know anything about that. One small issue though, I'm stuck in this ship. <laughs> oh, never mind, false alarm guys, I found the button that unlocks the door. Hijacking complete, <laughs> this is mine now. <laughs> Alright, here OBS had another heart attack induced by Star Citizen's coolness, so uh, I'll have to briefly explain what happened. In short, a guy came in and murdered me, but I got a pop-up saying who I got assaulted by and asking me if I want to press charges, and I did. <laughs> I'll see you in court, motherfucker. Which brings me to our next segment, the community. I found the Star Citizen players to be the most sophisticated when it comes to the gaming world. After all, we don't speak the simple and crude language the unwashed masses use. We use words such as affirmative and negative in our normal everyday speech. <laughs> oh my god, I swear I saw a couple of streamers doing this. <laughs> Uh, I mean, <clears throat> yes, it does make us feel validated. Why, of course, I do watch YouTube shorts of septic tanks being pumped out. How did you know? <laughs> yes, I do enjoy Pokimane's $84 cookies. Yes, I'm just going off script here. Okay, I'll stop. I'm sorry. I can already hear the people in the comments telling me, Dax, you only make fun of Star Citizen players because they have more money than you. And God damn it, I hate it when you're right. In the vast expanse of Star Citizen, MMO universe, encountering fellow players from time to time is simply an inherent and delightful aspect of the experience. See? I can sound cool and smart from time to time. Thank you, ChatGPT. While it's nice to see players running around cities and space stations, it's not the same as finding them in the open world. One thing I have to mention though, I don't like the fact that I can see other people's terminal screens when they use them. It makes me feel inferior to see people who have 10 ships while I have my little bucket. Please CIG, change this right now, I'm very sensitive. <laughs> no matter if you're flying or running around on foot during a mission, you can occasionally find someone doing their own thing. But whether or not they're friendly, well, huh. let's focus on the positives here. I knew that my funny name wouldn't inspire many people to group up with me, so I had to change it in hopes of joining a group. And I did manage to join one group on the official Discord. When I told them that I'm new to the game, they kindly told me to get the f*** out. Teaming up in an organized way didn't really work out for me, so I went to find people the only way I knew how. And surprise surprise, on one of my visits I found two people conversing in the dangerous PvP area. Now, as you can see, my ship's thrusters are knocking them down, making them easy prey. But I'm a nice guy, Hey, I'll try to establish contact in some way. And I did. But you know what funny thing happened? OBS broke again! Yay! Let me tell you what happened. You see that ship over there? Well, when I landed and the two players took notice of me, we communicated by crouching up and down. Well, one of them led me to the ship that I indicated earlier, making it clear that he needs help. I understood his distress and led him back to my ship. One of them sat down to drive to get close enough to their ship and the other one managed to climb into it without a problem, landing it down for the other guy shortly afterwards. And then they flew away. And the funny man who called me at the start of this section, yeah, that was one of them. Turns out he mistakenly called me instead of the landing services. That's alright. Good luck out there, uh, never mind. There's a bit more bugged footage here, so uh, bear with me, we're almost through. While I was printing more money for myself, another player stumbled into me during my transfer, which scared me to the point of shooting at him for a brief moment. I was able to collect myself and avoid killing him, but then he ran away and shot me back. By the time I could decide whether or not to fight back, I was already knocked out. But I wasn't dead. You see, the same player who shot me picked me back up and then left. I mentioned this in the global chat, hoping he would respond, but sadly he didn't. I mean, it's called Ghost Hollow for a reason. <laughs> a 
Thank you for the joke, Super VDF. I did eventually find him running outside though. We talked a bit and oh my god, I just could not stop losing my mind over how cool this video call thing is. Of all the cool things that Star Citizen has done, this one is the best. But now, instead of rendering one area, my computer has to render my friend's side too. And here I was thinking my CPU wouldn't be maxed out for like a couple of seconds. <laughs> You. Turns out we were both stranded in that area. Pirates have blown up both of our ships, but someone was coming to pick us up. They just had to survive first. We could do nothing but just watch and hope that our rescuer wins. You know, for our sakes. And so they did. With the defeat of the pirates, we were able to carefully, carefully board the ship. And this ship is... Oh my god. Oh hell yeah, let's do this. Mind. By the time I turned off my flashlight, powered on the turret, decreased the sensitivity on the aiming, we were off. Our captain, Sylvia Linneheim, owns a Drake Corsair, which costs $250. I'm not complaining, I'm admiring. Anyways, our benevolent pilot smuggled us into a nearby station and uh, all was well. Until I got stuck in the bedroom closet. Yep. Nothing ever goes smoothly for me, does it? Even when the ship got stored, I was still stuck floating in midair, which made the whole rescue pointless because I had to relog anyway. Now, let's talk about being bad. When you do bad things, like shooting other players or drinking juice, if you don't pay your fines, your crime stat will just keep accumulating. Get your crime stat high enough and you'll be hunted down by other players as a bounty mission. And once you die, you'll be taken straight to prison. Or you can go there willingly. Ah, home again. Getting sent to prison isn't a bad thing at all, because this is the only place where you can get 60 frames per second. The first time I went to prison was for the whole not slowing down thing which resulted me in getting a 20,000 credit fine. Those 20,000 credits translated to a 13 minute sentence. You can reduce your sentence by working in the mines. Only I had a tiny tiny issue. My mining tool didn't really work. My second prison sentence was 23 minutes. So all I had to do was mine a little bit and keep out of trouble. Oh look a player! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've been here before. I had to assert my dominance. This ain't my first time here, kid. There were still some that questioned my authority, so I had to resort to more drastic measures. My sentence may have been extended, but now I was feared by the whole prison, and that's the only thing that mattered. You know what else matters? Nothing. None of this matters. But in the context of this video, knowing how to mine, which I did not. So I looked up a guide and holy sh Shame on you, Citizen Frost. Only two minutes? Where's the five minute intro? Why are you not putting any reminders before the video even starts? You know, like subscribe and share to Google Plus? What is it then, Frosty, huh? You think you're better than us? You think you're cool? You think you're a little goofy? I swear to God, if you don't remake this into a 50 minute guide, I'll fucking- Whoa. What happened there? I blacked out and woke up here. Huh. Anyway. Mining by itself is pretty easy, and very exciting. Listen, it's not that you have to sit there and look at the rock while you shoot at it with a laser for 5 minutes. No, 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 that's, that's, that's not the best part. The best part is having to pick up each piece individually. And I really do like the fact that your character has to do a little dance after each one. Look at this here, see this? This is what mining looks like in a much inferior game. Can you believe this? This is so boring, it's putting all my fellow Zoomers watching to sleep. Wake up! You know that mining is... Wake up! You know that mining is boring when the devs put it in the game as punishment for players who break the law? <laughs> also, game. If you're gonna give me a futuristic laser to mine with, why not give me a damn vacuum cleaner? I guess I shouldn't complain about working conditions in a prison. After all, this whole game feels like a prison. Anyways, time to reduce my sentence. Out of the way, peasant. Turns out that aggravated assault adds nearly an hour onto your sentence. Now, sitting at a nice 1 hour and 19 minutes, after depositing the highest quality ore I mined, it turns down to 41 minutes. Oh. Alright ducks, it's time to keep it civil. Stay out of trouble and you'll be fine. Oh, you thought we were done with incidents, didn't ya? Are you f***ing kidding me? You're, you're joking, right? <laughs> you're actually joking. 
<laughs> no fucking way. I will kill you. You die. Herschel, go f yourself, Herschel. Look at the wrath you have incurred from me. You see what you did, Herschel? Do you see what you have done? Live with it now. Oh, I mean, now, as if the guilty conscience of taking another man's life wasn't punishment enough. Actually, I don't care about that part. If the extended sentence wasn't punishment enough. Three hours and 49 minutes because I murdered someone? Wow. <laughs> kind of overkill, bro. <laughs> now I had to live with the constant assault on my eardrums that are produced by the laser beams materialized by my eternal hatred. You know, if I ignore the voices, this is what the inside of my mind sounds like. If killing Herschel meant that I'm to live with this noise in my ears for the rest of my life, then all I can say is, it was worth it. See you in hell, Herschel. And you know what? I really shouldn't have said that part out loud because I think the game heard me and decided to employ its shenanigans on me again. You see, for some odd reason, depositing materials is a bit uh, wonky. I'm not saying it's bugged. I'm not saying it's bugged. But it's bugged. Which is surprising given the fact that the game has been working so flawlessly by now. If you have too much stuff in your backpack, the terminal will straight up reject you until you remove a lot of stuff from it. And you have to drop each item individually. Not being able to handle multiple instant transactions is very common for uh, a 2023 game developed for 13 years. 650. I'm sure that the developer who coded this part didn't just finish some two-hour online course or something. No, no, no. CIG has the best of the best. Just look at that budget. Leaving the prison is usually a quick and ceremonious process, but after all the atrocities I've committed, it only felt right that the game would crash while the sound of the constant laser beams persisted through the empty void. Prison gave me enough time to reflect on my life, and I decided to make a change. And that change is... A new ship! That's right, it's time to switch out the old rust bucket for something fancier. And I know just the ship I want. Or at least the ship that fit my peasant budget. For my purchase, I had to travel back to Area 18. And I don't know where to park here. Oh, alright. Ow. Pay fine? Yeah, I'm not paying for that. Trying to navigate this damn city would be a section of its own. Hell, I could make its own video, but let's leave that for a possible sequel. And just look at this terminal. What a detailed display of all the ship's components, guns and systems. I'm just overwhelmed by all the information. There it is, and purchased. That's not what I bought. Look at it. Oh my goodness, what is that? My cockpit is up here, Captain. Oh, sorry. That's not the actual ship talking to me, that's just what the voices in my head sound like. Oh, baby. Uh... I didn't pay for this! You know, this ship is really good looking. Almost as good as the people still watching this video. Hey, can you subscribe, winky face? Since this was a fighter ship, I knew the perfect place to test it out. But as good as my ship looked, it had one nasty drawback. That's right, just two jumps later and I'm out of spool fuel. So I had to go refuel at a nearby space station. That is, if I don't crash into it first. With this newfound information, I was starting to contemplate whether my purchase was worth it or not. Landing gear, deployed. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, it was worth it. She's so worth it, bros. Luckily, there was indeed someone guarding the area. All systems online, engage. God, I sound so cool. Target down. That was actually the first time I've been able to take down a pirate ship. So, uh, since I'm already here, time to celebrate with some money printing. Um... I see. After earning some more money, I thought I'd treat my ship with some new hardware. Eh, looks the same. Landing gear deployed. 
Oh yeah, baby, keep talking. Oh, and I found out where to land at Area 18 this time. Can't afford to embarrass myself in front of my new ship. I even took the correct train this time. Oh, no, actually, it's wrong again. All I need to do is some shopping. Nothing can possibly go wrong now. Nothing can possibly go... No! You're... I... W <sighs> I was holding backspace to delete the fucking sh... You're joking! Oh my god... What a piece of sh... So players are getting stuck on random stuff and we need some sort of reset button that will respawn them back to their base. So Jim, what do you have to suggest? Thanks, base. Backspace? Backspace? What do you mean backspace? Backspace? Okay, so they press backspace and they, uh, what? They die. Perfect! Perfect, Jim! Nothing can ever go wrong with such an unused button. Let's not have the self-termination button on home or end or delete or something. Nah, backspace is the way to go. Can you tell how much I love this game so far? And if you love this video, please give it a like! Well, time to travel all the way back to Area 18 again. It's okay, I don't mind. Let me just call landing services. Um... Where's my hangar? Am I blind or is it just really not showing? Let me call again. Well now! Oh, what's this? Ah, oh, this must be it. Warning! You are blocking an active flight bay! Oh god, oh my god, fuck! Don't you fucking dare! Is this it? Please tell me this is it. Landing complete. Oh, go fuck yourself. Landing complete. Have a stay. Shut! Looking at a ship equipment guide, I noticed that not all of the weapon slots were used. Which confused me a bit because if the gun fits, why not just put it on? After all, why not? Why shouldn't I equip them? Somehow I ended up buying three extra guns, but hey, that's okay. I'll just transfer them to my ship. Oh. Uh, apparently I can't do that. Uh, you know, I thought that there wasn't enough room for them in my ship since I was hauling all the equipment and all the gear that I have been gathering for the past six days. I just want to make that clear. Because I wanted to switch home bases to get closer to the money printing area. Oh well, now I just need to get over to that space station and... I'm sorry, what? <sighs> I'm starting to get a tiny bit irritated here, since I lost everything I had there. I wanna go home. F*** you lady, I'm out of here. At least this city won't kill me as soon as I take off. Oh yeah, remember those six guns I put on my ship? Uh-oh. Yeah, turns out it wasn't such a smart idea after all. And I almost learned that the hard way. And by hard way, I mean uncontrollably drifting at high speeds through an asteroid field. As cool as this was, sadly it wasn't a viable option. After removing the extra guns from my ship and setting my new home base, I went on a bounty hunt mission to put my new tech to the test. And just as before, I had to stop to another space station to refuel midway to my target. Except... I couldn't? That's weird. I swear this panel was working before. Let me just briefly exit my ship and then re-enter. Oh, I can't climb back in. Look, I'm sure there's a valid reason why all the options are acting strangely and the enter ship one is just missing altogether. It must have been something I've done. Definitely my fault. Why is this game so fucking bug- I'm sure that storing my ship and retrieving it again will fix everything and- Oh look, it did. Alright, after refueling and finishing all the ship maintenance, I can finally continue my mission. Everything is just fine. Excuse me for a moment, I need to uh, return some videotapes. Get this 100 gigabyte lump of garbage off of my SSD. You know what, I wasn't gonna go there, Star Citizen, but you forced my hand. Let's take a look at a random collection of bugs that I have experienced so far, shall we? Spontaneous combustion. Objects glitching through the terrain and ships. Bodies moving on their own. Ships randomly spazzing out in different ways. Players not syncing with trains. 
I know, dude, I know, I know, I've been there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Guns glitching through terrain. Dead ships refusing to die. Getting stuck on terrain. Multi-tool not firing. Zooming in and out instead of only scrolling through the menu. Being unable to interact with anything after respawning. Demonic possession. Random crashes and disconnects. But don't worry, I think this was just the result of the free fly event. I'm sure that the Star Citizen servers come from the best gardens. Inventory bugging out. In the many, 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 many different ways. <laughs> I can't drop it. I can't do anything. <laughs> map causing a 99% frame drop. Map markers glitching out. Map markers disappearing. Hand armor cutting off the menu. Ship not starting. Random camera swaying. Being unable to sell stacked items. Doors not closing. Choking randomly in the hangar. Landing services trolling. Initiating ship storage procedure. Climbing a simple ladder. Spooling system thinking I'm near a planet. Ships doing this type of nonsense. <gasps> All this and everything I recorded and did not record, which is in this short list right here. And that's the stuff that I can only remember. And these aren't just some funny haha or oh, look funny funny bug. No, this is straight up stuff that kills you. <laughs> kills you inside. Imagine if your only way of transportation had a 1 in 10 chance of killing you. This game is so janky that going back to day Z felt like I was playing the most super advanced polished game ever created. And this game does have a history of breaking everything with updates, making the game unplayable for months. Sort of something like Todd Howard does with Skyrim mods. Oh, but Star Citizen isn't their main focus, I forgot, it's Squadron 42. Oh look, they even have an actor, oh my god, it's so exciting! What is this damn video about anyway? We paid today so that in 40 years from now, our grandchildren can experience the beta version of Star Citizen. I held the line, oh boy, I was wondering when this game would officially turn into a cult. Oh yeah, sweat and tear simulations. Oh, uh, I, that's all I have ever dreamed of. Thank you. I'm sold, CIG. You win. And here's a small part of a list of AAA games that have come out in Star Citizen's development time. Enough of a reality check for ya? But Dux, it's not a scam. It's just a mismanaged product. Yeah, look at this price tag and tell me what's so mismanaged about it. In stock? Oh great, I was worried it was gonna get sold out. A digital product? Sold out? This is not a joke, by the way. These prices are real. And go ahead, prove me wrong in the comments. You've probably heard from other YouTubers to keep the discussions in the comments civil and respectful, but no, I say f*** that. Go crazy out there, prove them you're right, get intimate. This is a joke? Please behave and be nice. Politely tell the other side that their opinion is trash. Anyways, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas and all that jazz. Here's some stats for the video, so please like and subscribe. At last, it's over. <laughs> so, about them feet.